The MHQ JRH Dual M2 SSD adapter is a great way to get both your SATA protocol M2s and your non-volatile memory express M2s hooked up to your desktop computer via a PCI Express 4X slot. Now I challenge you to say MHQ JRH Dual M2 SSD adapter three times fast, but it's one of the finest generic Chinese products I've reviewed. So please check it out. So let's see what comes in the box of the MHQ JRH dual M2 SSD adapter. So what we have is a wonderful manual and if we take a look at it right here you can see that it includes installation instructions which are not very useful but at least shows us all the parts that go in the manual and claims to have a 12 month warranty. If we look at the card itself you see it's got two different slots for the two types of M2 SSDs. We have the M key for the non-volatile memory express cards and we have the B key for the SATA protocol M2 SSD cards. And this is a dual card. It can operate on both. Now the mounting mechanism is a little bit unique on this. We get a couple of mounting brackets right here, but instead of screwing from the top, they screw from the bottom. Now they're just stored right here and we'll have to move them over to the correct position when we put the cards in. The other thing you'll see that comes with this is we have either a standard back plate or for a slimline back plate. We get four screws, two of which are to mount this back plate. Nope, 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 we don't want that one. We want the standard size one. We also get some heat sinks and adhesive tape to adhere them to our SSDs if we wish and some rubber bands to hold them on. And then we get a little SATA cable, which is interesting because you think since this is plugging into a PCIe 4X slot or a 16X slot, that you wouldn't need a SATA connection. But if you're plugging in an M2 that's doing SATA protocol, you have to hook this SATA cable up to the motherboard. And then we get the standard, extremely high quality Phillips head screwdriver to go with it. So let's put this together. Now let's get this card ready for use. Some assembly is required. The first thing I want to do is put the bracket onto the card. No, not this one. I don't want the slimline one. Let me carefully put that out of the way. And this is the one I want. It's going to go right here and you can see the four screws they've given me two are the same size and two are larger. These two right here would be used to connect the back plate to the computer case and these two that are the same size are how we're going to screw this on. But I'm not going to risk wearing out this fine ultra high quality screwdriver that came with the card. I'm going to put this aside to give as a holiday gift to some of my closest friends. All right, instead let me grab my nice iFixit screwdriver and get the screw. Now the other thing we got to do before we can put the SSDs in here, unless you have a full length SSD that goes all the way out to here, you can see we've got two little screws to mount those. We have to use these little mounting nubs right here that actually screw in from behind. So they're just stored right here and I need to remove them so that I can have them ready to put in the SSDs. And I am going to put in two SSDs. So uh, here's the mounting nub, our bracket, and there's the screw that's going to hold it onto this card. And let me go ahead and get the other one off right here. And we are ready to install my solid state hard drives. The two M2 SSD hard drives I'm going to install is a Samsung 860 EVO. This uses SATA protocol and I'm going to install this crucial 500 gig solid state hard drive that uses non-volatile memory express. 
So here are my victims right here, and you can see if you look at the end connectors, they have different connectors, and it's very clear which one will go into which slot of the M2 card. So here's my M2 card. If I look at this up close, it says very clearly that this is the non-volatile memory express slot, and you see it just has the notch down here. It's an M key, and the one that's SATA protocol is a B key. So here is my SATA protocol card. It's got two notches, and the notches will only go in right here. But to get this plugged in, I have to take this little nub right here and put it on the end of the card and then work it down so it will go through the hole in the back of the card and then I need to put the screw in to hold it in place. I'll leave that to your imagination. Installing the non-volatile memory express SSD is virtually the same. I've got to take my little nub, in this case, and put it on the back of the card, plug the card into the NVMe slot, push it down and get the little nub to pass through the back. There we go. Now I need my screw to screw into it right about there. And if you cannot operate a screwdriver successfully, this video is definitely not for you. All right, I've got everything installed, except since I have a SATA protocol SSD, I am going to need this SATA cable plugged in, and it'll have to plug into one of the SATA ports on the motherboard. There we go. We are now ready to put this in the computer. I just got to pop this card into the computer case and I could install it in a PCIe 4X or a 16X. Of course, if I put it in a 16X slot, it will only use the 4X speed because that's all the connectors we have. And then after plugging that in, I need to plug the SATA connector into my favorite SATA connector on the motherboard. Now, we really should screw this in so it doesn't flap in the breeze. There we go, and get my SATA plugged in, and then we're ready to power up and see if the setup program, the BIOS, sees the drives. All right, my next step is to jump into the BIOS and see if the new drives are detected by the motherboard. So if I come over here, in this ASUS BIOS and look through the list of drives I have, I can see I have my Windows drive, which was already in the computer, a 240 gigabyte crucial drive. I can see the 500 gigabyte non-volatile memory express M2 card that I installed on my card here. And I can see the SATA protocol M2 uh, Samsung SSD 860 EVO. All my drives are present. I just need to boot into Windows and put some partitions on those drives so I can use that storage. This is also where if you were installing your operating system to it, instead of booting into Windows, you would boot from your installation media and install to the drive in question. Let's get these drives ready to hold some data. So I'm gonna go into disk management on Windows and the first thing disk management's going to say is, hey, you've got two brand new hard drives with no partitions or partition tables on them. Do you want me to initialize them? And I do, and I want them to be GPT partition tables, so I'm going to say OK. So if we maximize this right here, here is one of the drives. I'm going to right click and just create a simple volume on it, run through the wizard real quick and call it Bubba. And go to the second volume, and let's put an NTFS partition on it, and call it Susan. And there they are. They are hooked up. 
if I go into this PC, I can now see all three disk drives. Now, they're both 500 gigabyte hard drives, but you know Windows uses a different definition of gigabytes. So according to Windows, it's 465 gigabytes, and that's technically correct. But let's use Crystalmark and let's run some benchmarks of these drives. So first, I'm going to run disk drive D, and I'll run some tests, and we'll come back. I've got my drives formatted, and right here, disk drive D, Bubba, this is the SATA protocol M2 SSD, and Susan is the non-volatile memory express. So I'm going to use Crystalmark to benchmark these. So there's Bubba, disk drive D. I'll hit the drop down here and go to disk drive F for Susan, and I'll tell it to start running the benchmarks. And I'm going to run them both at the same time so you can see it's reading and writing to both hard drives off that card at the same time. And we'll start to see some results shortly, but I'll bring you back when it's done. Already we can see the non-volatile memory express is faster. 500, 550 megabytes a second is about the maximum speed you're going to get with a SATA protocol solid state hard drive. I'll bring you back. So here are the results. We can see that the Samsung SATA protocol SSD is running about as fast as we would expect. Remember, these are different types of tests that are going to benchmark at different speeds, like random is going to be slower than sequential. And here is the non-volatile memory express. So this crucial is definitely not a barn burner, but we could be very well limited by the PCIe 4X that we're seeing on the computer. Now, just to make sure there is no difference in the performance of these two devices running the benchmarks both at once, I'm going to repeat the test, but just each drive individually, and then I'm going to shut down, pull the SATA drive off the card, and run the test with just the crucial non-volatile memory express again, just to see if having two cards, having two drives on the card is affecting performance. And effectively, when I ran the benchmark for the non-volatile memory express by itself, I mean, not running the Samsung at the same time, you can see the benchmark results were the same. So now let's try it with only the non-volatile memory express plugged in to the expansion card. So as I suspected, there is no difference in performance for the M2 SSD non-volatile memory express, whether it is the only SSD on the card or if there's two on the card and they're both running a benchmark at the same time, you can see the performance is the same because the SATA version of the SSD is going through the SATA cable and the non-volatile memory express is going through the PCI Express 4X slot. Last test I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the non-volatile memory express off this card and put it directly on the motherboard and run the benchmark again. All right, I've got Susan, disk drive F, otherwise known as the crucial 500 gigabyte non-volatile memory express M2 SSD, directly plugged into the motherboard, and I'm going to run the benchmarks again. And already we're seeing it is significantly faster since it is directly hooked up to the motherboard instead of using the expansion card. So we're definitely seeing some throttling through the expansion card on the PCIe 4X. And I'll bring you back when the benchmarks finish for this one. So the results are in for the non-volatile memory express SSD, the M2, plugged directly into the motherboard. It is overwhelmingly faster. We've almost got 2,400 megabytes per second on sequential reads versus when it was plugged into the PCI 4 card, we were getting about 830. So three times faster when directly connected to the motherboard. Now, if we look at the SATA results when it's plugged into this expansion card, we're getting about 550 megabytes per second. And that is the speed of SATA protocol. So the limiting factor is how the M2 using SATA protocol is talking to the motherboard. Non-volatile memory express is far superior. So why would you ever want this card 
for your non-volatile memory express M2 card? Well, I can think of a couple reasons right off the top of my head. Number one, your motherboard does not support non-volatile memory express for M2 cards. So when you go to pop that M2 SSD into your motherboard, it just will not recognize it. The other reason to have this card is it gives you great flexibility for taking an SSD out of another computer that's not working and being able to mount that drive and get the data off of it. It is a great data rescue tool for M2 SSDs since it will support both SATA and non-volatile memory express and both at the same time. And for $20, it's a steal. So I recommend this card for its use. If I had non-volatile memory express M2 on my motherboard, I would definitely, that's where I would be plugging in my M2. But to have this as a tool and have this as a utility to solve specific problems and to hook up additional M2 drives, it's a great little product and I recommend it highly.